uh, within the frame of this year edition of Red Dawn Festival, um, uh, there was a, a workshop, the, in the matter of fact, like a whole program uh, named uh, Eclectic, uh, Tech. Eclectic Tech Carnival, <laughs> um, uh, within uh, uh, which uh, there was like uh, various uh, uh, different workshops uh, connected to uh, uh, technology, uh, given uh, mostly by the women. And uh, one of the uh, workshop uh, uh, givers was uh, uh, Selena Savic, artist from Serbia, who is at the moment studying at Lozana. Uh, and I would ask, I would like to ask uh, um, Selena uh, to say something about uh, the workshop she gave and uh, uh, generally something about uh, this program within the frames of the festival. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Um, well, the Eclectic Tech Carnival is. Uh kind of spontaneously organized event that uh, happened already at least eight or ten times. Uh, you can check on the website. Um, the ETC stands for etc., which is uh, one of the system folders in Linux, like, and then it's again uh, something else. Uh, and um, it's organized by women for women, so it's this uh, women-only uh, uh, kind of environment uh, and it's um, it's uh, intended for women to teach other women uh, to use technology and, and just learn technical skills that um, are mainly on a very basic level but uh, depends also on the on the participants. Uh, I was giving the workshop uh, about solar cells and this uh, system of making solar cells is something that's actually invented um, in Lausanne uh, at the same faculty where I'm studying, but I uh, don't have uh, much to do with this laboratory. Uh, they, uh, they started working on a kind of photosynthesis of generation of electricity, so they use uh, dye from plants to, uh, to, um, to react on the sun and they, they in induce these electrons around as like a battery and it's a cell that's completely organically produced uh, and I try with my fingers and a very low-tech uh, tools to imitate this laboratory process to kind of question how much you can interfere with mainstream um, industry uh, because also uh, solar solar energy is something that's considered very ecological and something very uh, uh, positive but in fact uh, the cells that are uh, commercially used are made of silicon they do not degrade and uh, they're definitely not organic and if we would have enough solar cells to power the energy consumption we would actually totally pollute the earth again so um, I think the future of this energy should be in more organic materials and I think also it's interesting that the so, uh, synthetic process of uh, making silicon cells you cannot imitate somehow but the organic ones you can it's very popular I think I found many uh, practices online people trying different ways getting more or less uh, finished half finished products kits but it's really really popular but for, for what exactly can you use this uh, uh, battery? Uh, uh, in, if you would make them really well, like mainly if you would seal them really well, then the liquid inside would stay long, like months. Uh, then you could make electricity for well different purposes. Uh, one cell is this big and it like, is big and it produces 0 0.4 volts. So if you connect them in series, you can you can reach some voltage that's, I don't know, you can power an MP3 player or uh, motors or things that use like five volts. Maybe even an Arduino in, if you have a lot of cells. Hmm. Great. Uh, and the, the other question I wanted to pose uh, uh, is related to this like autonomous uh, uh, women spaces and uh, feminist spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I wonder, like, uh, uh, what do you think uh, that uh, in uh, generally, but especially in IT, it's uh, it's really needed to have these uh, 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 special places uh, to generate the the women's public sphere or. Uh, just to exchange and uh... I think the situation about it, it is now about uh, something like you know this uh, tends to zero then tends to infinity but it never really reaches like it's kind of uh, utopia to have completely autonomous women's spaces uh, specifically because 
um, now I was kind of disappointed with the fact that we all showed manuals uh, to our participants that were done by men. So there was not really autonomous because we, I mean, it doesn't matter. In fact, I, I'm not very, uh, yeah, I'm not very uh, radical about this uh, relation who can, I mean, in any sense, who can do what, when and where. I think it's always negotiable. There are reasons why there is need for these women's spaces. And, uh, and these reasons do exist, I think, so we should kind of try to work on it. There is different ways people communicate about technology. Uh, historically, men were more, more exposed to it. So I think because, because we have all this development of technology that was done by men, they were then more proficient in it. And then they just developed this kind of discourse that is very specific to men because those were somehow very exclusive uh, societies. Um, and then it is maybe a bit problematic to exclude somebody uh, intentionally because somehow it was never really openly said uh, or it was said very long time ago that women cannot participate clearly. Later on it was allowed but it was not happening and uh, I heard from uh, uh, from Eileen uh, a few days ago that they organized the Eclectic Tech in Linz one year instead of Livoli and at Livoli there is like 90% of men participating and that, that year when they had Eclectic Tech it was 100% women. Next year the Livoli was again all men so there is some intimidation happening in these circles that intimidates women to participate. There must be a difference in the way they share knowledge or they communicate uh, these skills and I from my point of view I experienced this kind of uh, arrogance from some men uh, who are very very skillful or questionably even skillful but just really feel it's their thing they don't want to share it they want to share it with people who will follow the same conduct of uh, like code of conduct somehow. There is something. I mean, it's difficult to point it down, but there is something, uh, and I think that it's really useful to have this uh, twisted situation. It doesn't. It doesn't need to stay like that forever. That's the whole point. Like people really ob uh, object. I heard there was a lot of discussion here, also in Slovenia, about why are now men not allowed to come? That's not tolerance. I think it's not about discrimination. It's about concentration. So it's about the concentration of women who have to come together and help each other. It's not about a banning somebody to come. It's more about inviting people. So it's about inviting women to work together. That's the whole point. And. One day maybe we will be able to communicate on an even level and then we will not even think about this problem, but maybe uh, I think it's not yet time. Yeah. And uh, who, who are the participants of your workshops usually? Uh, the, 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 the women who are like advanced in technology? Uh, want to very diverse. Uh, their... Now we had very kind of young students of different disciplines uh, studying like physics, architecture, artists. Um, we expect always artists to come to these workshops because it's a festival, it's culture, it's uh, not really, it's not really even communicated through uh, academic circles or, you know, scientific uh, institutions. So I, I would expect always uh, girls that are studying art to come but it doesn't I'm really happy that like we had a physicist yesterday and she was really happy and enthusiastic and uh, yeah they're really diverse and of course nobody has experience in these solar cells because it's something new.